the Center for Audit Quality presents Profession in Focus. Hello, and welcome to this edition of Profession in Focus. I'm Cindy Fernelli, the Executive Director of the Center for Audit Quality, and I'm pleased today to have joining me Tim Ryan, who is the Chairman and Senior Partner at PwC. I'm also pleased that Tim is one of the CAQ's board members, so we're, I'm doubly excited to have you here with us It's today. great to be here, Cindy. So, I'm going to dive right in because I've got a lot of questions for okay. you uh, because you see a lot uh, where you sit now at PwC. Mm. But let's lay a foundation. What do you think is the state of auto quality today? So when I think of auto quality over the last 10 years, I think the profession has made tremendous strides. But at the same token, the expectations that our stakeholders keep going up, as they should. We're an incredibly relevant profession. We play an important role in society. And it's reasonable to expect expectations going up. Good foundation. Kier is a focus going forward from an auto quality perspective. More substance. Like more substance around the important issues. So think about fraud risk. The reality is we're in a more complicated world than ever before. I'd like to see us as a profession have even more substance discussion around fraud risk. Key estimates. More challenging more substance discussion around key estimates, and probably most of all, more challenging and substance discussions around disclosures that are important to our stakeholders. I also want to talk to you then about talent, because mm -hmm. some of the things that you talked about are yeah. talent, right? Yeah. You have to have the right people in the firms right. to help you get to that substance. Yeah. And as um, sitting at the helm of an organization that has tens of thousands of employees, mm -hmm. what are you looking for in the talent pipeline and how do you think that's changed over the last couple of years? So I would say probably the most important thing is what we're looking for in talent is people with high EQ, high emotional quotient, people who love people, people who like to understand and learn more. People who want to understand business, society, because the technical foundation, they're coming to our some campus with great foundations and then we invest in that as well. But we're looking for intellectually curious people. We're looking for people with different backgrounds as our society changes from a diversity perspective and a composition perspective. But I would say most of all, we're looking for people who really want to continue the learn their learning cycle. And it doesn't just help them to get our college or university, it continues. And if people who have that intellectual curiosity, they're going to do great in our profession. Is part of that because of the pace of change? Yeah. Uh, things seem to be going much quicker, so I would think if you have that good base, you can adapt to whatever the technological advances are. Yeah, so I would say, you know, it's funny, I often hear a lot about the pace of change, and it is fast, but even when I reflect on my career over the last 25 plus years, every five years something changes, whether it be a tech bubble, with the Russian money crisis, a financial crisis, and now we're in the day and age of technology, and that's changing it. So that's where I come back to, we are really looking for people who are comfortable with the world changing all the time, and it's going to change, so that comfort level then helps us do better by our clients, by the investor community, and our other stakeholders. So we've talked about talent. Mm -hmm. Now I want to bring it down a little closer to home. Mm -hmm. You are the proud father of six children, mm -hmm. which I admire immensely. Mm -hmm. Let me just get that on the yeah. table. But one of the things that, that um, I've seen on your LinkedIn is that you view your children as having taught you a lot and them teaching you. Explain to me what you meant by that. So, um, so my children are ages 16 to 8, and I don't do it by myself. I have a lot of help, and their mom is great as well, so she deserves a lot of credit too. That being said, they teach me how to talk in plain English. Like when we talk to the kids and we're talking about something, they say, Dad, we're not a client. Like talk to us <laughs> so we can understand it. Um, and they'll give me advice on how to make a point quickly, how to get the real point across and be succinct. And in an organization of millennials, they help me relate to our people a lot better than maybe I otherwise could. And that's very, very helpful. That's incredible. That's great. I think any of them will grow up to uh, follow their father's footsteps? If they would ever listen to me, which is a big <laughs> if, if they would ever listen to me, I would highly encourage them to go into this profession. I, I think it's a great foundation for people to come in who want to learn the business community, who understand what's happening in society, and then go on to do great things, whether it be the public or the private sector, but it is a great foundation, so I hope so. That's good. Yeah. That's good to know. So, one final question. Yeah. I can't let you go yeah. without talking to you about cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. We know it is a huge uh, focus for boards of directors, for audit committees, for companies, mm -hmm. and now it's something that the profession has started thinking about, too. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little your thoughts about how the profession might 
uh, play in the realm of helping companies uh, assess and, and shore up their cybersecurity? Yeah, so I think, first of all, I'm, I'm incredibly encouraged that boards, investors want us to play a role. Because when I think about our relevance of closing gaps and building trust, which is what the profession's founded on, I think it's a great place for us to play. Meaning differently, we're relevant and we have the right skill sets to play as a profession. We think about coming up with a set of standards and providing assurance against a set of standards. So I think it's the exact right place to play for the profession because it's in our wheelhouse. I think we're making progress. I'm proud of the fact that as a profession through the CAQ, we're leading, meaning we're asking our stakeholders what's important to them and then developing products and services that meet their needs. So I think we're on the right track at this point. And the reality is this cyber challenge and opportunity is going to be with us for decades. So it's the right place on a long-term basis for the profession to play. And I think it's one of those issues that the more people, the more talented, skilled people that are focused on it, the better we're all going to Right. Be. And that builds confidence in what companies are doing and what governments are doing. Again, right place for us to be. Yeah. Well, Tim, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank it you, was Cindy. A pleasure. It's great to be here. And it was great to have all of you join us as well. So we hope to see you next time. Bye.